Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Shafiq, and I would like to welcome all of you in this video session. In this session, actually, I'm going to show you an example problem for compaction. Okay. Usually, for compaction um, problems, we try to bring soil from a barrow site to actual construction site. In many cases, we also have situations where you have to cut some places and fill some places. Okay, if you cut and fill, then basically you may not have to uh, buy soil from outside. But if you see that the cut volume is much smaller than your fill volume, then basically you have to buy soil from a borough site and transport that one to your construction site. And then you have to compact it, compact the soil as the, uh, according to the schedules. Means like you have to achieve um, certain, you know, like dry unit weight of the soil. Okay, and you already know that uh, if you compact the soil uh, at optimum water content, then basically you need the least energy for compaction, okay? So let's move forward and see that what is the problem we are talking about. You can see here uh, that an embankment will be constructed from borrowed soil. The cross section of the embankment is shown in this figure here. The soil in the embankment has to be compacted to a dry unit weight of 108 pound per feet cube at a moisture content of 14.5%. Okay, the borrow soil will be brought in a 10 cubic year truck loads at a hall wide ratio of 0.8 and moisture content of 10%. So at the borrow site, the void ratio of the soil was 1.1 and the specific gravity of the soil GS is equal to 2.68, okay? So I have basically three different um, sites or areas where my compaction water content uh, is gonna change. First of all, in the borrow site, and you can see here, For the borrow site, they're saying the soil has 1.1 void ratio. So 1.1 and your GS of the soil is saying 2.68. Now you can understand that when you move soil from one place to another place, actually the uh, specific gravity of the soil solids doesn't change, right? Because you are taking the same soil from one place to another, place, so the specific gravity of soil solid doesn't change. All other things usually change. Sometimes the water content may not change if you just, you know, bring that one quickly. Um, otherwise, your void ratio, your unit weight, uh, either dry or uh, moist, moist unit weight, you, you will see that they will change significantly. So, from here, borrow site, a borrow site, you are just going to move that one to a truck. And in the truck, what information is given here? That, that the truck, the whole void ratio is 0.8, water content is 10%. And um, the volume of the truck that you can carry is 270 uh, feet cube. Okay. Now from the truck, you just move that one to construction site. And they are saying that you have to compact that one at 108 pound per feet cube and the water content has to be 14.5. Now from the understanding of GS, we can say since the GS of the borrow soil is 2.68, so basically the GS in the truck and GS in the construction site has to be same, okay? So these values are also assumed that these are given too. And one other thing, this one is kind of a 
assumption for this particular problem that you are taking that soil just from here and then put that one in the truck and a very small amount of time to loading the truck, we are assuming that the water content at the barrow soil site is also 10% because this is 10% at the track, okay? So once you get all this information, now we can start working each of the problems. The first one is saying the volume of the embankment per 100 feet length is most nearly equal to, means like how much total soil you need for 100 feet length of the embankment, okay? So here is my embankment here. So you can see the area of the embankment cross section, which is, let's say I can just divide that one three parts, like this one here, here, and here, okay? So the first part is rectangular here, which is 15 multiplied by 25, okay? You can see here, that if this is 15, then this one has to be 30 because this one horizontal is two times than the vertical one. So if this is 15, then this one is actually 30. So I have half into 30 into 15, and I have two of them, like this part here and this part here. So basically the cross-sectional area is 825 feet square. Okay, once you get the area, you multiply that with the length, which is 100 feet, and then basically you just get the total volume of the embankment per 100 feet. It's 825 into 100, so 82,500 feet cube of total soil per 100 feet length of the embankment. Okay, so this one is your answer. Okay, now let's move forward. The void ratio of the compacted site in the embankment site, okay? So basically we have to first uh, see that what we know in the construction site. In the construction site, we know this is the dry unit weight, this is the water content, and this is your GS of the soil. So the void ratio of the compacted soil, you can just find that out from this equation here, that gamma D equal to GS gamma W one plus E, that, that is basically one of the equations, you know, like I um, wanted you to remember, okay? So your gamma D equal to GS gamma W one plus E, if you know gamma D actually is given here, your GS is also given gamma W, which is 62.4. So you can find out your E here. Now, if I play with that equation, you can see that E is basically GS gamma W divided by gamma D minus one. So if I plug all those values here, GS equal to 2.68, gamma W is 62.4 divided by gamma D, which is 108 minus one. So basically you get, this is your void ratio at the compacted site. You can also notice here that at the borrow site, actually the void ratio was 1.1, right? And then they move that soil to uh, your truck. Since the truck can carry a certain you know, volume, so they usually try to compact the soil with the backhoe, you know, like to make that one little compacted. So from the barrow site, the void ratio is 1.1. On the truck, that was um, 0.8. And at the compacted side, you can see this is 0.55. So basically, your void ratio is decreasing, means like the soil is more compacted at the comp construction site. That's the usual case, you know, like all the time your compacted site, your construction site has to be compacted much higher than the borrow site, okay? So that's your answer C here. Now let's move forward and see the next question, the moist unit with the compacted soil in the embankment is, 
there are five choices here. So let's do that math here. So you already know the moist unit weight. We already know that one there, 108 pound per feet cube, W into 14.5. That's basically your water content and GS is 2.68. So you can do this way like your moist unit weight is dry unit weight into one plus W. So if you plug that value 108, one plus 0.145, that's basically you have to express your W all the time, not at percentage. You have to show that one as decimal point, okay? So if you do that one, then basically you get the moist, moist unit weight of 123.66 pound per feet cube. So your answer is this one here, okay? Now let's move forward. So the weight of the water in the compacted soil per 100 feet length of the embankment immediately after compaction. So after compaction, you know, the unit weight is um, how much? is 14.5%, right? So that you have to just find out the total weight of water per 100 feet length here. Now let's see that how we can do that one. So we know that construction site here, gamma D is 108 pound per feet cube. That's the total solid per feet cube of soil, okay? So what is the total solid I have per 100 feet per length of the embankment because one feet cube has a weight of 108. Now the total volume is 82,500, what we calculated at problem number one, right? So here you can just find out the total weight of the solid per 100 feet length of the embankment, okay? So volume is 82,500 multiplied by gamma D. So you can just get, this is your, <coughs> excuse me. So you can get the weight of the total solid is this much here. Now, you know the water content, so you can find out the total weight of water because W means like your water content is weight of water divided by weight of solid. Now you know the weight of solid and you know the water content, so you can find out the weight of water here, right? So weight of water is basically water content multiplied by the weight of the solid. So this is the weight of the solid and this is the water content. So this is the total amount of water here in the compaction site per 100 feet length of the embankment. So your answer is this one here, okay? Now let's move forward. The moist unit weight of the borrowed soil in the haul truck. We are now talking about that. What is the moist unit weight of soil in the truck, okay? So, what we know about the information of the truck, that's kind of important now. So we know the volume is 10 cubic year or 270 feet cube. The void ratio is 0.8. Water content is 10% and G is equal to 2.68. Now, since E is given and G S is given, the most easy equation, you have to use that one like that second equation I wanted you to remember, that what is the moist unit weight? That's actually moist unit weight is G is gamma W, one plus E into one plus W. You can remember this is basically gamma D, right? Gamma D, so gamma moist equal to gamma D into one plus W. Now, everything is given, G S is 2.68, Gamma W is 62.4, your E is 0.8, and water content is 10%. So if I plug all those values here, this is 10%, this is 0.8 is the E. 
So you can see your moist unit weight on the track is 103.2 pound per feet cube. Okay, you can remember from problem number three or four that the moist unit weight at the site, construction site was 123.6. So much higher than that. So the field site is very compacted, right? Now let's move forward. The dry weight of soil in each uh, hull track, okay? The dry unit weight in each of the hull track, because we know the dry density or we know we can find out the dry density in the track and we know the volume of the track. From there, we can just find out what is the dry unit weight in each track. So first of all, what is the information of the track that they have like 270 feet cube total volume. Now, we are talking about dry weight. So first of all, what is the dry unit weight uh, of soil in the truck, right? So we can just use this equation, G is gamma W into one plus E. From there, we can plug the value of G is gamma W 62.4 divided by one plus 0.8. So that is 92.9 pound per feet cube. So every feet cube has a weight of 92.9. So how much? is the weight for 270 feet cube. So dry unit weight of the soil is two into 20, 10 into 27 into 92, 92.9, okay? Or you can just say like, hey, this is 270 multiplied by 92.9, okay? So that's basically your, uh, that's basically your, um, total weight of the dry soil, okay? You have to remember that they have also water there because this they have like 10% water, right? So if you know the solid, so basically they have 10% of that, which is 2,508.3 pound of water in that truck, okay? So the answer for this particular problem is, here, 25,085 pound of water. Now they are asking the dry weight of compacted soil per 100 feet length of the embankment. Well, we already know that dry unit weight at the compacted site, right? Which is 108 pound per feet cube. And we also know the total volume per 100 feet length of the embankment. So if you just know this one, we already did that one in, you know, like uh, in the first problem, number one, okay? So we know the total volume here. We know the dry unit weight. So basically your dry weight of the soil has to be 82, 5,500 multiplied by 108. So that's actually 8,910,000 pound, okay? So the answer is this one, okay? Let's move forward. The number of truck loads of borrow soil needed for construction of 100 feet length of the embankment is that how many truck load I needed, okay? So I know that actually the, that how much total solid I have to carry, okay? So this is given for the truck and we also find that out for each of the truck actually can carry 25,080 pound, okay? What's the total amount of solid I have to take um, in the construction site? That's the, we just you know, figured that out from the problem number seven that this is this much here, okay? So how many tracks I need to carry that much soil? So these divided by this, because this is like each 
truck can carry this much. So that's basically 355.3, but truck load is always you know, kind of an integer. So you just round it up, which is 356, not truck load. So your answer is 356 here, okay? So all the time, basically we try to solve the problem in terms of uh, solids, that how much solid I have to carry, okay? Because the total amount of solid doesn't change. The water content can change when you try to move soil from one place to another place. The um, moist unit weight can change because of the change of the water content. That's why we just try to calculate everything based on dry unit weight so that the change in water content doesn't have any impact in our calculation. Okay, let's move like problem number nine. This one is saying the unit weight of moist soil at the borrowed is. So if you want to see the information of the borrow soil, you can see E is 1.1, GS equal to 2.68, W equal to 10%. So unit weight of moist soil, we know that unit weight of moist soil is gamma moist is GS gamma W1 plus E into 1 plus W. And you already know this one is your gamma D into 1 plus W, that's basically your gamma moist. So if I plug all those values here, then my gamma W at the side is 87.6 pound per feet cube, okay? Now, you have to understand that at the field side, actually soil is very, very loose, okay? Very loose. You can see this one is 87.6%. On the other hand, in the construction side is 123, but they have a little difference in water content, okay? So I cannot, you know, like, compare them apple to apple because in the borrow side, they have 10% water content. In the uh, construction side, they have 14.5% uh, water content, right? Now let's move forward and see why I'm talking about that. So your answer is 87.6 pound per feet cube. That's the moist unit weight of the soil and the borrowed side, okay? Now, this one is very, very important that the total volume of soil excavated in borrow site is, we usually try to see like how much feet cube of borrow soil I need to compact one feet cube in the construction site, okay? So that's actually a compare between the dry unit weight of soil because I'm just, again saying that the water content can change, but the weight of solid doesn't. If you don't have enough water, they usually bring water, spread that water on top of the soil and then try to compact it, okay? So it's not kind of like counted whenever you calculate the compaction problem because you bring water separately, okay? Now, for this particular problem, you just try to see that we have to find out the gamma D at the borrow site first, okay? Because we know the gamma D at the construction site, which is given 108 pound per feet cube, okay? So if you find out the gamma D at the borrow site, you just plug that value here and you get 79.63 pound per feet cube, which means like each feet cube has 79.63 pound of solids, right? In the construction side, you need actually 108. So if you bring one feet cube of soil from the borrow side, that will not cover one feet cube in the construction side because that will be more compacted and less you know, volume, right? 
So we try to make, we call that one a ratio that each fit cube of compacted soil requires. Sometimes we call that one ratio, which is equal to gamma D at the construction site divided by gamma D at the borrow site, okay? So you can see if you divide this one with this, then you get 1.356 feet cube. So this means like every feet cube of soil, compacted soil in the construction site require 1.356 feet cube of bulk soil. Or I can say that one this way, that if you bring 1.356 feet cube of borrowed soil and then compact it to one feet cube at the construction site. So if we know the total volume required at the construction site, then I can multiply with this and find out that actually how much I have to excavate in the borrow site, okay? So I know the total volume and the compacted site is 82,500 feet cube per 100 uh, feet length of the embankment. So I need this multiplied by 1.356. So actually I need 111870 feet cube of borrowed soil. So we are bringing this much and then compacting to 82,500 feet cube in the construction site, okay? So your answer is here in eared cube. So I have to convert that one to eared cube. So you can see this is in eared cube here. So the answer for this one is this one, okay? 4,144.2 cubic year, okay? That's it for this video session. If you have any question, please feel free to join me uh, this Wednesday uh, so that we can discuss about that, okay? Thank you for watching.